Hey you internet. So today I'll be explaining most of the Genshin Impact currencies. We will go from the most important and we will work our way down. So the first important currency is your wishing currency. So you got three types. You've got your intertwined fate for your limited time character. You got a queen fate for your standard banner. And then of course you got your Primo Gems and Genesis Crystals which are one to one. So you can use these Primo Gems to can convert into intertwined fates. You can do this by going to your shop. So you can just go to shop for the character section. So you on PC you press escape go to shop. And then you go to Paimon's Bargains, you go to Purchase. So you can convert 160 Primo Gems for one Intertwined Fate. I would not recommend getting Acquaint Fates because you get these naturally from leveling up characters and getting the free Battle Pass. Okay, so those are your currency. And if you are a spender, you can purchase Genesis Crystals, which then can be converted to Primo Gems 1 to 1 ratio. Okay. So we covered the wishing currency. So for new players that have been requesting the explanation for currency. So as you can see, these are your limited time banners. So these are the characters. This is your weapon. You use your intertwined fate for wishing for those so intertwined fate works for the character and the weapon and acquaint fates you use for your standard banner okay next up we've got the currency from the shop so we've got masterless stardust which is this blue one so this one you just get from wishing on the banner and this is useful for a monthly reset so on every month on the first of the month you will get discounted fates so you can get those for 75 per each fate and you get five fates each so you get that once a month for the star glitter, so you get a star glitter when you get a duplicate of a character, whether it be 5 star or 4 star. So star glitter looks like this. I would recommend you only buy the starter characters. The reason being is because the starter characters, Kaya, Lisa, and Amber. The only two ways you can get these characters is either through the shop or by the standard banner. And the chances of getting it in the standard banner is very low. Do not buy the other one. So the other four star accompanying the starter characters. Because these are in the limited time banners, you just got to wait for it. But there is no limited time banner four star for the starter characters. So I would use your star glitter on your starter characters. Now if you don't like any of the starter characters, you can totally convert your star glitter into intertwined fates. Once again, do not convert into acquaint fates. It is not worth it. Okay. So we've covered most of the important ones. Next, we are moving on to your resin. So there is four types of resin, but they all work basically the same. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I'm kind of winging this, and I just need to catch my breath just a little bit. Okay. So as you can see, resin... So how I would describe this is 
like your progression meter or your fun factor. Basically, Risen allows you to like get materials that can upgrade your character or it allows you to fight weekly bosses and get rewards. So that is what I call the progression meter or fun factor. So once a day you get 160 Risen and you spend it on like talent upgrades or weapon upgrades. Okay. So you got your natural Risen at 160 and it refreshes 8 minutes per Risen. Alright. So you've got your Fragile Risen. So these are given out when you level up your adventure rank. So let us go to in the, uh, the adventure guild. So I'm currently in Fontaine, the new region. So in every region you'll meet a Catherine. It's like um, Nurse Joy or Officer Jenny, like similar to the Pokemon series. You'll get this like same character that's in every region. So when you level up your adventure rank, you will get like Risen from every level. So that's your Fragile Risen and you basically have that stored in your backpack indefinitely and you can use it whenever you want. So Condense Risen is when you condense your normal Risen and you do that by going to this crafting bench and when you've got Risen you can condense it and save it for another day. But it requires Mora and it requires a crystal core, which you get from crystal flies. Okay. So I did say that there are four risen. So there is a temporary risen that you can buy from your teapot once you've unlocked it. So we'll go to our teapot now and I will show you that Risen. Alright, so you talk to this bird called Tubby this realm is and if we go to Realm Depot so there will be a transient Risen. This is only temporary so you've got a time limit of seven days and once the seven days runs out it will disappear so Use this, like, as a last resort, I guess, because it is time limited. The other, if you ever well, the other two is unlimited in terms of time. Okay. So we covered that currency. All right. So next up, we will cover Dream Solvent. Sure, why not? So Dream Solvent is a currency that you get from weekly bosses. Now, why would you need this? So if you go to your crafting bench and you go into this middle section. So sometimes you just get the wrong uh, weekly boss material and you can use your Dream Solvent to convert it to the correct material, but it only works for that particular boss. So you can't swap your boss material with another boss material. It only works for the same boss. Another use that it can be, I guess, um, used for is converting your weapon bullets from your weapon. So from your boss drops. So these weapon bullets that are dropped from your boss can be converted using Dream Solvents as well. So Dream Solvents are pretty rare. I would say one in every 10 boss you would get them. And I guess the weapon bullets are pretty rare too. One in 20 bosses. So every, I guess every month you might get a Dream Solvent or weapon bullet if you're lucky. Oftentimes you're not. Okay. 
So that is the Dream Solvent. So next up we've got Dust of Azov. So with this currency, you have to buy it from Paimon's Bargains. And I believe it is in the Stardust. So it is the Masterless Stardust, which means you have to wish for items and characters. And then you'll get the Stardust and you can buy it from the shop. Should you buy this? I would say over time, no. But I guess if you're a beginner and say for example you got the wrong materials or like the boss that you're fighting gives like um, different stones. So say for example you need the electric stone right the electro stone but they give you fire or like grass stones so pyro and dendro so what you do is you use the dust of azov and you can convert it to the correct uh gemstone okay so is it a useful currency it's useful in the beginning when you don't have the correct amount saved up all right so we will talk about the oculus so you got your animoculus your geoculus electro oculus dendroculus and there's also hydro oculus as well so these are found in the world like the overworld by exploring so if we go to a statue of the seven one second while my pc's loading okay so you can find this by pretty much doing quests and just walking around and exploring so basically here is a short uh blurb you can find these scattered all over the world and you collect these and once you collect enough you go to your statue of the seven you deposit it into the statue of the seven it levels up and it gives you different rewards primo gems mora both are very valuable so it gives you a sigil i will talk about that currency next and shrine keys shrine keys aren't that important basically a shrine key just allows you to open up a special chest so if you like completing your game to 100 percent that may be worth doing but it's not critical okay so next up we got our sigils so you got your hydro sigil animo sigil geo sigil and so on so what do they do so they are important and i will take you to the hydro one now so every region will have its regional tree or regional leveling up system so what i mean by that is like for fontaine you can upgrade this fountain for the other regions it's either a tree actually all of them have been trees so far except for fontaine all right so as you can see we offer sigils in to this fountain to upgrade the fountain and the reason why these currencies is important is because they give you different rewards so they give you Mora, which is important. They give you your weapon bullets, important. And they give you a crown of insight, which is very important if you plan to max out your character. And they give you fates as well, and weapon crystals to upgrade your weapons. They give you resin, and they give you dream solvent. So upgrading your 
regional tree or your fountain is very beneficial because it gives you a lot of items to upgrade your character and weapons okay so I guess moving on we've got lucky coins so some of you may play the trading card game in Genshin Impact the TCG I personally don't like it but I have to do it every week because it gives me like experience for the battle pass the free battle pass that is all right so this is your first town monster if you go into this place where all the cats are and you basically you see these blue icons you can verse these players and if you beat these players you get these lucky coins and if you talk to this cat called Prince you can use your coins to buy cards or buy an invitation so an invitation means you can invite like new characters and get their cards as well so you got weapons support you use your coins this lucky coin to buy these cards you can buy a moving skin or dynamic skin it allows you to buy these like I guess the real life version would be called a holographic skin but in the game it's just like a moving animation skin so yeah and I talked about invitations so using lucky coins to get to buy an invitation so you go to this um, billboard I guess with tubby on it and then you got all these characters you can invite them into your roster okay I know I've been talking a lot all right what other currency do we need to talk about so not so much currency but I should talk about I guess weapon materials upgrade materials I guess that's sort of a currency in itself I know it's a little bit overwhelming for new character uh, new players starting out like I just talked about 20 different types of currency so it's a little bit overwhelming all right so once again we're going to the crafting bench so I don't know if you consider these currency or not but let's say for example character materials you need these to level up your character to ascend to the next level or you need them to level up your talents or you need them to upgrade your weapons so basically all these random items that they are considered currency I suppose alright so what's the best way to explain okay so you see your talents so you've got your character material which is this and then another currency is your talent material which is books or scrolls and then you've got your boss material and then if you want to max it out fully you need a crown of insight so I've just explained four different currencies and you may have no idea what I'm talking about so okay let's go back to the crafting bench and we'll go through one by one so first of all we've got we just talked about the character and weapon materials okay so like I said they're used for a variety of things level up character level up weapon level up talents next up we've got talent materials so that upgrades your skills so books scrolls so these are used to upgrade your talents as you just saw or your skills next up we've got weapon materials these are used to upgrade your weapons 
Okay. Alright. Well, I... Do I consider them currency? I suppose everything in the game is currency. Alright, so you got Hero's Wits. These are experience books that level your character up. Can you level up by just fighting monsters? Uh, yes and no. Fighting monsters give you like 1 or 2 XP. So you'll be playing the game for like 100 years and maybe you would level up one level. So the whole point is that you use your resin and you go to an area with this ley line so if, if we just go but we won't activate it Where do you want to go next? so you see that blue thing over there like in the distance spots. I have a few references so when you activate that blue cloud it's called a ley line and that will give you experience books because fighting monsters they only give you one XP so it's not worth your time when you need to level up your character and your character requires like a few million XP so yeah okay so that's uh, Hero's Wits, Adventures Experience, Wanderer's Advice so that's covered okay boss materials we covered that so you fight the boss you get the material to level up your talents we covered that uh, boss materials for ascension so there's a whole bunch of random boss materials again so if you want to ascend your character Osmanthus what character do I not ascend Alright, so let's say you want to ascend Aloy. So you need to fight this boss that drops this material. And then you've got your character materials that you need. So both of these are character materials. Okay. So those are what boss materials are. I think I'm just covering every currency or yeah pretty much covering everything all right I think that is most of it okay what else so weapon bullets do I consider it currency I suppose it is an exchange so you use these to craft weapons that's pretty obvious okay and you get these by fighting bosses all right depending how long this video is I might not do custom uh, uh, subtitles okay is there anything else that you need to know as a beginner I think I covered everything let's see so covered all these currencies I think we're good um oh it's the same as I remember. right so Mora even though it was the most important one and we did talk about it I didn't tell you how to get it so you need to go to the Mora ley line which is the yellow I guess bubble bush so this will be located in your world map you just go there similar to the experience ley line it is the Mora ley line it's weird how gold comes out of the ground actually no that makes so much sense gold does come from the ground what am I talking about all right so as you can see in the icon there's this golden bush or bubble and I'll just regenerate some stamina so this thing this golden bubble or golden bush I guess and that's where you get your gold from 
Okay. So, artifacts you don't need to know in this video. Alright. So, food. That's not really currency. I suppose you can say that food can be, well, raw ingredients can be exchanged for food, so it could be currency. But food is food, you just find it either in the wild or you buy it from the shop. Nothing too special about that. Fish. Ah, uh, yeah, fish is currency. So, I know, I just said that. So you need to fish different fishes in different regions in exchange for weapons that are quite good. So, an example, say for example is, all right, Farina actually, that's a perfect example. So she's currently using the ferryman. So you can only get this weapon by exchanging different types of fish. And yeah. So another example is the catch and end of the line. As you can see, there is a fishing theme with a trident and a swordfish bow. And now this is probably the weirdest one. We've got a pipe. Anyways, point is you catch fish and you exchange them so let me go to okay fontaine i think this is the closest fishing line okay i think this is the last thing we'll talk about and we'll be done with this video i think this video is pretty long it's like 20 minutes or so all right So, we're nearly there. Fishing places are generally like so far away. Okay. So they got that fishing icon. You talk to that NPC. And so you got these different items, right? So you need to exchange the fish to this fisherman and it will allow you to buy these items. You can also find the fishing icon in your mini-map. So look out for those because they give you good items or good weapons. Alright. I think I covered everything. I believe so. Well, everything that matters, I guess. There's a lot of other currency that doesn't really matter. Alright. So, right, yeah, trees. So, you can cut down trees, and you can use trees to make furniture. Boats are made for transferring commodities. So, I should probably... Yeah, okay, I, this is the final one. So, trees is a currency, I guess. So, you can cut down trees. Although, this realm is what I would do is I would go to um, creation and furnishings and go to convert wood and just convert your rocks to wood. Um, it's magic. Don't think about it. So say for example you want this wood, you can convert your rocks to wood, okay? And yeah, that is the final currency. So you can exchange wood, you use your wood to make furniture. So this is your teapot, um, you can customize your teapot however you want. And yeah, I think I covered almost every currency in the game. Alright, so thanks for watching, 
I know this is a long video for beginners and it might be a little bit overwhelming. Just start off with the basics. Mora is universal for everything. You need it to upgrade for everything. So this is Mora. So that is the most important in-game currency. And then like the most the important currency for spots. most players is getting a few wishing currency to wish for characters. So, As intertwined fate is important, I remember. and primo gems. So, primo gems you can pretty much just get it by opening chests and stuff. All right. So start off with those. Mora and your intertwined fates and primo gems. Those are your three most important currency, and I've explained a whole Every bunch more. Has its final day. Don't so, thanks for watching. Hope you had a great day. I hope this helps new players because you guys did request it. So, be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, ring the bell. Turn on all notifications. Wine tasted. Leave a comment below if this was helpful. I know all the veteran players will probably be like, I already know this. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is for new players that requested it. Become a member if you want to. Drop a super thanks if you want, want to. Next? Until next time, see ya. Course.